Hi, my name is Heather Feather. I am the owner of Rare Bird Medicine. Today I wanted to talk about criticizing conviction. Have you ever experienced someone that has a lot of conviction in what they believe and how they perceive their reality? Have you ever spent your time and your attention trying to convince them to hold what you believe in your reality? Why are we doing that? <laughs> really weird. Like you never see a bear come up to a banana and be like, be a bear. You never see a bumblebee tell a flower, you should be a bumblebee. <laughs> like there's no part of mother nature. There's no part of her ex existence that I've ever seen other than in this two legged experience in which an entity asks others to be what it is. It's really strange. Like, why, sh why am I supposed to be you? Okay, you support Trump, you love money, like Republican versus liberal, you know, Democrat, you know, liberal versus conservative. Conservative philosophy is typically less open, more rule following, and typically more concerned around finances. Liberal is typically way more open, uh, more concerned about people, and more concerned about freedoms. Okay, so that's just, that's just how those things are often defined. So, so we need both. We need somebody, you know, we need a certain number of people to be super open. And we need a certain number of people to be super clo closed and rule following. The combination of both actually creates a really diverse paradigm. Now, I don't require that my friends all be liberal. I'll, I'll tell you. And I'll tell people all the time. I am one of the most liberal people I've ever met. And that is because I'm so liberal that I'm liberal enough to remain open to philosophies that are not my own, to not ask others to be me. I have many conservative friends. Great. You do you, boo-boo. I'm actually apolitical. I don't even believe in voting. I don't think your vote counts at all. I think that's just like a way to get the masses to argue amongst themselves, to cause split and polarity and to cause a lack of community among, among the masses. It's easier for puppeteering. So teach your own. I'm not asking you to agree with me. I'm just saying that like, I, I don't require you to agree with me. I don't require you to be apolitical. You love voting. You think your vote counts. Good. I highly recommend you do that then. But I can tell you there've been a lot of people that feel like they've got to get me out of the apolitical viewpoint and into the voting because they believe in voting. And it's like, boo-boo, I'm not you. I didn't come to beat you. I didn't come to do you. So good, you vote and you encourage those that are willing to have that conversation of being open to that being a system that is functional. Um, I'm not that person and I'll tell you that point blank and then two leggeds will still be like, but yeah, but let me just. So there's a lot of like trying to convince others that have conviction in what they believe and what they perceive and how they see the world, trying to get them onto your bandwagon. Why are we doing that? Why are we doing that? Do you require that everybody agree with you? Now, we do know, if you've seen Social Dilemma, that our brains are literally being programmed based on the level of interaction that you allow social media to take up in your, in your mind and your heart and your awareness. You're being programmed to only be able to receive people that agree with you. And that's, that's really why I feel passionate about talking about this topic, because um, the world has always been diverse. It's always been, been diverse. A bear doesn't ask a banana to become a bear. A bumblebee doesn't ask a flower to be a bee, <laughs> right? Two-leggeds are constantly like, be like me, agree with me. If you agree with me, then I feel validated. Well, here's an idea. What if we got our self-esteem and our value by validating ourselves and allowing ourselves to have conviction in what we believe and allowing others to be who they be? There's just hot thought for the day. <laughs> Here's a hot thought. Let's allow diversity like all of the rest of Mother Nature has done since the dawn of time. We have much we can learn from our four-legged, feathered brethren, fish, plant, friends. They're doing all kinds of things that are much more balanced in the design, like saying, you do you, boo-boo. You be a daisy. I'm going to be a rose. You do that. I'm going to do this. I have a, a wide variety of friends, and I don't use the diversity in our differences is a means to attack them. If you don't do what I'm doing, you're against me and my people and blah. There's a lot of different reasons people choose what they choose. And that's, that's an oversimplification of, 
of why they think differently than you. We are given, we are, our life is literally a reflection of our values. Your life is a reflection of your values. What you're placing your attention on is what you value. If there's anything in there you're not enjoying, I recommend changing your mind. Maybe instead of sitting around and complaining about your job, you can focus on your lunch break, learning to play guitar. There's a redirect on it. You know what I mean? You're choosing what to value, what to put your attention on, what to allow your consciousness to absorb, to become the matrix of how you think, how you be, how you'll respond to life, how you walk in the world. I, I just want to speak to this piece of giving people the freedom to have conviction in their beliefs. It feels to me like two legged spend an inordinate amount of time trying to get people onto their page. Get on my page. And it, hey, I get it. If you are a YOLOer, you only live once. Yeah, that would create an inner sense of urgency to, to fix it. I, you know, if you believe you only live once, I got to say like, I'm going to pray for grace in your mind and your heart and peace because <laughs> it seems like we're not doing too good of a job and we're not going to get there. Now, I, I, I don't I don't need you to agree with me. I think that's great. If that gives you peace, good. And I'm going to keep praying that that gives you peace and that you believe that we'll get there because I also am working to believe that we get there and to hold high consciousness that we will all go home at some point. From my perspective, we have an infinite number of lifetimes to do this thing called life. And because energy cannot be created nor destroyed... We definitely will drop flesh costume. Perhaps you know some that have dropped flesh costume this year or throughout the years of your life. Somebody drops flesh costume every year I've ever been alive. So perhaps you've witnessed that. But that energy cannot be created nor destroyed, so another flesh costume will come through. I also believe that personality is an energetic dynamic, and if energy cannot be created nor destroyed, that energetic dynamic must come back through as well. But, but I don't need you to hold that just because I have conviction about what I believe because I believe what I believe. I've spent 40 years studying what I believe. I've sad Scorpioed out deep dive, a deep dive into every single thing that I've wanted to understand. What is it? What is it? What is it? What about from this angle? What about from this angle? Prismatic study of a wide variety of metaphysical topics and things. Just because that level of study has caused me to have conviction doesn't mean I need you to agree with me. Doesn't mean I need to get you on my page. Also doesn't mean that I need to like lob softballs at you before I speak a sentence. This is what I've been experiencing in the past year or two. It's like two leggeds expect me before I speak to be like, I really respect your beliefs and your thoughts and where you're coming from. And, um, and you know, I'm just, I've just been, I kind of have this philosophy and you know, that's okay if you don't agree, but let me just share with you where I'm coming from. I'm not trying to say 17 sentences before I say something. When I say something, I say it because I speak from my beliefs. I am this character in the play called life and I believe what I believe. And if you're going to engage with this character, I'm going to hand you what I perceive and what I believe. You chose to come to Heather Feather. Well, this is what a Heather Feather thinks on what you have to say. And I don't want to have to like him and haul around what you think for me to speak. <laughs> so can we just give people permission to have conviction about what they believe? Is that, can we be open to that? Can we consider that possibility of like, you know what? I think I'm just going to let all these people that disagree with me get home on their own time. You don't have to have everyone be a part of your life. Now you're welcome to argue with fools. But you might, might find that's a foolish pastime. <laughs> you are welcome to argue with fools. I have met many people that, that, that from my philosophy, my perspective, which is not correct, it's my opinion sack, my sack of opinions. From my sack of opinions, it is unevolved to be racist. It is unevolved to, um, to advocate pro-life when you haven't adopted any children yourself. Oh, you're pro-life? How many babies have you adopted? So what you're saying is that we need to throw all these children at adoption centers. Who's addressing that problem? We also have a population problem, right? I'm not right, right? So so most of my life, I would get really upset at like pro-lifers, wall builders, whatever. I'd just be like, idiot. You know, I would just like judge it. I would straight up judge it. Ding dong, you stupid. You know what I mean? And that's because I was in a stupid state of separation. I was being a fool judging them. 
Who am I to judge you? I don't know your history. I don't know what happened to you. I don't know why you think the way you do. I don't know, like, even, like, a thimble's amount of the essence of all that you be and all the lifetimes you've lived. I don't know. What I do know is I think this over here, and I think that you think that over there, and I do get to discern how much of my experience I'm going to have you be. I'm also going to continue to speak now 45 until the day that I die from a place of conviction in what I believe because I believe what I believe. I'm not you. I've had so many people tell me like, Hey, I don't, I don't think that, or I don't agree with that. It's like, okay, well, that's great. But did you expect me to speak into what you believe? I'm not you. Okay. I'm not you. I'm not you. I'm, I'm glad you love to vote. That's great. I'm apolitical. I'm not you. And how often in this need to change other people's minds, have you found that to be an effective pastime? How often have you found people go, you know what? I'm really glad that you had this conversation with me, Sally. I'm going to go pro-choice after being pro-life my whole life. You know what? I'm going to stop being a Baptist and become an atheist. Thank you, fellow atheists. I mean, how much of trying to argue your point and convince through your own conviction and your own belief system, someone else to validate your opinion how much time are we going to waste in the paradigm called, I need you to validate me by agreeing with what I say and be? I don't need you to validate me. You can be like, that's crazy, Heather. How can you not think that a vote counts? And I would be like, ask the natives if you can trust the government. <laughs> that would be my response, you know, to each their own. <laughs> but ask the natives. Like, are you familiar with everything they've done to natives? Just research that history a little bit and see if you can trust your vote counts. <laughs> you know, I've studied things that cause me to be apolitical. I do not think your vote counts. I'm not right. I am not right. And I, I because I believe in multiverses, I think those that really believe that your vote counts in their multiverse, that's true, and you better vote. <laughs> but I'm not in your multiverse. I'm this other multiverse where being apolitical is the end. You're in your own multiverse. You do, you boo-boo. You know what I mean? So, so I just think it would be a good thing to consider if we are allowing people to have conviction in their beliefs. If you're atheist, do you need the Baptist to become atheist? If you're Baptist, do you need the atheist to become Baptist? Why? <laughs> Why? It's obvious that spirit loves diversity. All the blades of grass, all the types of clouds, all the ways we feel, all the ways we think, all the ways we speak, all the types of bodies, all the ways of being. Obviously, spirit loves diversity. So are you like, the, I'm a better designer than all of spirit, and I think you should be like me? Okay, boo-boo. Okay. Is it possible that your ego speaking? Is it possible that your ego wanting validation? Here's, here's another idea. Here's another way we could do this is just allow everybody to be who they are and have conviction in what they believe. And if something doesn't work in the garden of your life, get away from it. <laughs> Let it evolve in its own timeline, its own paradigm. And hold high consciousness. Hold high consciousness if you want bridges to be built. If you want um, communion and union with your diverse opinion, hold high thoughts that we get there. But it's like, I feel like the really evolved perspective is to accept diversity. That is, a, that is evolution. Evolution accepts diversity. It doesn't go around and kill all the plants. You know, if I'm a lily, I don't go kill all the other plants. If I'm a monkey, I don't go kill all the birds and all the other animals and find I have nothing to eat, right? So, so we don't kill off all the other ideas and all the diversity out there. We just be who we are and know what we know to be true. It helps to be open so that one can grow in their own perspectives. But, but I'm not interested in lacking conviction in what I believe and just hemming and hawing around what I'm supposed to say. You know, I was thinking, it's like, no, I think this. <laughs> and, and I notice some people take that like a punch. I'll be like, well, yeah, that was a power animal. You know, and people will be like, ugh. Don't tell me what it was. And it's like, I'm not telling you what it was. I'm telling you what it was to me because I have conviction in my belief and in what I see. You do not have to agree. Boo-boo, you don't have to agree with me. Yeah, that's called allowing diversity. I hope that you have a golden day. I hope that you can allow diversity in your experience more and more, 
more and more. And you can always subscribe to Rare Bird Medicine on YouTube. Like and share your comments there. Blessed be.